they've surpassed Alabama. So you have to keep Clemson there even if they lose twice. Because the two loss Clemson is better than Florida, who lost to the LSU, who yeah, who I think they beat LSU beat Texas AM. And if LSU is trash this year and they beat some elite teams, well, you kind of have to give Clemson credit for being great. Like Trevor Lawrence is 85 and three from high school till now. He's only lost like two games. And even then, you can't even give him the Notre Dame. He's only lost one game in college in three years. So Clemson gets a champion's pass. So you say Clemson, Alabama, because they're probably going to win. Um, Notre Dame is pretty much good. Notre Dame might get screwed if they lose, though. That might be the only thing. They might keep Notre Dame out because they've routinely gotten blown out every year they're in the playoffs. Clemson blew them out. Like, they're not – like, this might not be the best year for Notre Dame if they lose. They might get hosed. So, yeah, sorry for the long-winded answer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so, so can we move to uh, touchdown or turnover? Indeed. All right, first one up, uh, Trent Brown this past weekend finally returned from the the COVID situation he was in where um, basically got a botched IV, came back with a face mask that was in the shape of a black power uh, fist. So, Kenny, is that a touchdown or a turnover, rocking that face mask uh, for pregame? Because, well, the NFL doesn't allow you to wear custom face masks in actual games. Yeah, because that would have probably would have been dangerous that somebody stuck their fist in that. The fingers <laughs> that. For sure, you're getting this shit broke off in the name of black empowerment. That actually would have been hilarious. I wish Bosa wasn't hurt, so like they could have played the Niners and always see Trent Brown just headbutting Nick Bosa every play. Or Joey Bosa, that'd be fantastic. Joey Bosa looks like, yeah, I'm a Trump supporter, but I'm actually a nice guy. <laughs> Nick looks like, oh, you're a piece of shit, and I hate you. And we've probably been, you've probably called kids the N word when you were in high school. I'll admit, but, I yeah. saw that face mask all over social media, and I just didn't get it at first. I was like, you have to look at it, Rex the hard, right? Yeah, and then somebody like, put the somebody put the put the the fist in, the, in a caption. And then I was like, oh, if I tilt my head this way, now I see it. I thought it was just like a fucked up mask. Like, I thought it got broke or something at first. But then I was like, oh, okay, I see it. So I'm just going to say it's a wash. I don't I don't think it's a touchdown or a turnover. I'll just go and with plus the first they down. they lost this game, so that means nothing. Yeah, they but got the dope. dog shit beat out of them. By the Colts, bro. Like, the Colts literally had their will. Like, Phillip Rivers showed... What he can do with fucking a decent defense that can actually create turnovers. And a running back. And not not even a running back. Uh, like above average skill players. Like both running backs went off in their own ways. They both got off big runs and some solid catches. Receivers, uh, like three different receivers game, looked fucking elite. T.Y. Hilton looked like T.Y. Hilton of like four years ago. Like. It was bad, bro. Everything that could have went wrong pretty much went wrong. Well, bro, that, that Kenny Moore interception in the end zone was legendary. I was like, Jesus Christ, this is what's going on? This man made it. That's a career highlight tape. For sure. He made a one one-handed interception corner. right in the fucking corner of the end zone and toe-tapped. It looked like Odell at free safety, bro. He didn't even need to stick him like Jerry Rice. Like, that was that was clutch. Yeah, so that's, I think that's I think it's a touchdown, but like nobody's gonna remember it because they've lost two games in a row. And also, no, they beat how the Jonathan Jets. Taylor did what he before. did. Would you still would you have drafted Jonathan Taylor knowing he was gonna be this productive, or would you have been cool with Jacobs? Because how's that working out? Um, I think the biggest thing with Jacobs is he's been banged up, like. He, like I said, he would be, right? When he plays, though, he's still good. Like, he still is a, a focal point of the offense. It's just he, has, he, he hasn't he has been 100% healthy, so he hasn't been breaking off those 15, 20-yard runs that we saw last year. But, he, well, but he's still pretty solid. 62-yard run. 
Yeah, but that's because the Raiders linebackers are fucking trash. And he also runs a four three eight. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, people are gonna realize Jacob's saying you didn't even like Jonathan Taylor, bro. Yes, I did. You didn't like him until he ran that four three, and then you were like, "Oh, maybe he might actually be good and break the Wisconsin running back curse." I'm sold. But before that, you were like, "Oh, Wisconsin running backs, I don't know." Yeah. Oh no. By the way, hey, by the way, uh, just to let you in on a little something, in case you didn't know. We can move on. No, actually, I got one for you. Touchdown or turnover. Ezekiel Elliott's yards, rushing yards per game, have gone down drastically every year he's been in the league. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck kind of setup is that? The it's a trap. This one with bitterness. It's a trap. Bro, his offensive line has also got worse Excuses. progressively every single year. Uh, he took all the money for the line to produce nothing. Nah, nah. Stop nah. it, you guys. Paid, He's still going to have a like thousand yards people. rushing on a fucking team with Andy Dalton and no offensive line. Jesus Christ. Like, bro, they paid like five people after him. Why are y'all using money as an excuse? Jalen Smith got paid. Like, they, they paid a gang of people after Zeke got paid. Lawrence yeah. got paid. Come on now. So Come it's on now. so it's not just Zeke paid. taking the money and getting getting comfortable. No, because D Law hasn't been that great since he got that they check ran either. Him into the ground. Just, That's just, true. Just say it. Just like they Demarcus Ware. Oh, I thought you were talking about Demarcus Lawrence. I was like, yeah, no, they pretty well, much no, ran him into the ground. Fell off. He totally fell off. But I'm just saying, just admit that they Larry Johnson, Ezekiel Elliott. Nah, he's so good. Okay. Okay. If you put him on the Falcons, is he putting in work? Because that offense. I mean, is Todd Gurley your boy? No, Todd Gurley's hurt though. Todd Gurley's knee is finally. Todd Gurley's been hurt they, they since Georgia, bro. He's been hurt. Don't use that as an yeah. excuse. But he actually is putting up pretty decent numbers this year. Not I'll put it to you this play. way: I bet you Zeke gets a touchdown in the against the Patriots when the team's only down seven in the fucking Super Bowl. How about that? Take that for fucking data. That's not, nah. not going to happen this year for sure. Nah, they would have put, they, you know what they did? McVay would have put Zeke at receiver and had him on a fucking post corner. All right. To get, to get Robert Woods open up anyway, on ne- a slant route. Next one um, Juju Smith Schuster says he won't change his dancing antics. Uh, the Steelers got the dog shit beat out of him after. Uh, Juju pretty much danced on the bill. Um, so is that a touchdown or a turnover? Juju saying he's still going to be himself, even though he's asking for it. It's a turnover because he's not really a number one receiver, and he's proven it. Like, Claypool has more touchdowns than him this year. And he's a rookie. Like, everybody knew, like, yeah, this – like, when he had that one great year with um, Antonio Brown, it's like, yeah, he's a great number two. He's a great counterpunch to whoever your number one is, but once you once you take him out, it's like okay. And if he's not, he's been injured, he's been hurt, and Big Ben is really not what he used to be. Like this is Big Ben looking like this Eli is game manager. His last couple this of years, is game manager, Big Ben. He's looking like Eli when all he did was just throw it to Odell and it was a pick to everybody else. But he's been hurt, bro. Like, he's been hurt for three years. Like, a solid three, four years, Big Ben has been banged up. So Yeah, and the defense, and they have no running game. Like, why do you think uh, Claypool has, like, a rushing touchdown, a receiving touchdown, probably going to have a passing touchdown? Like, they've had to find ways. I mean, that's kind of a normal for Steelers receivers. He probably still won't get a second contract from them because that's what they do. Yeah, they don't give, they don't give guys a second contract unless you're Heinz Ward. If Hines Ward were in a 4-4, he would have never got a, a second contract. I guarantee you. <laughs> He's too much of a game breaker. Now nah, you can go somewhere else. <laughs> four, a 4-5, four, 4-6 four, guy? Oh, yeah. You wouldn't make it anywhere else. You got to stay here. All right. Uh, next, we got Taker Tangent. All right. Uh, 
Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers as the MVP front runners. Do you have a take or a tangent on that, Kenny? You can't give it to Mahomes. Yeah, that's why you're gonna piss off Michael. But you realize there's only one person in NFL history who has a 40 touchdown season and less than five interceptions. And that person did it twice. And that person's name is Aaron motherfucking Rodgers. And like God. outside of Devontae Adams, no, that's outside of Devontae Adams and Tanya in the tight end, nobody knew who the fuck he was. Like Aaron Rodgers has created stars on that offense. And he finally has a, a running back in Aaron Jones and the defense is starting to come along because Savage or the safety is making a lot of great plays. But Aaron Rodgers is like, if you took him off this team, they're not, they're not a threat to the chiefs, but realistically, if you put Aaron Rodgers against the chiefs defense, he's doing similar things to Mahomes. Like if you took Mahomes off this chiefs offense, they function, but they wouldn't really have a whole lot of identity outside of Mahomes and the occasional handing off to Clyde Edward Hilaire. And it's like Rodgers is the reason why they're so lethal. And the like he Rodgers made the Bears defense look like the fucking New York Jets. Like you have to respect that. And I respect Rodgers' numbers more than I do Mahomes for the sheer fact that everyone around Mahomes is getting better and more elite. Like, Kelsey is still elite and a first ballot Hall of Famer. Tyreek Hill is like beast mode 2.0. Like, this ain't even his final form yet. <laughs> and then you got fucking um, Mikhail Hardeman returning punts for touchdowns. Like, and then their running backs are productive. So it's like, like, with the coaches, like, the Chiefs are never out of a game. So if you took Rodgers off the Packers, they're done. They they don't have an identity. They sh- they're going to struggle to get Devontae Adams the ball. They'll run the ball, but they won't have that extra gear, that extra threat. So, yeah, I, I, I'd say Aaron Rodgers should be the, the front runner for MVP. And I think the Packers could beat the, the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs – I think the Packers have a better defense than the Chiefs when it matters. Okay, yeah, man. I think between those two, I mean, they both kind of get the LeBron effect, right? Like, oh, you could give it to them every year. So that's why we don't give it to them any year except for that one year. So I think it's really a toss up, but I, along with, with what you're saying, Kenny, I would go the edge to Rodgers just because I feel like he's doing it with. Less now that said, I know he has more interceptions, but he was leading the charge, you know, at least in the first half of the season. And I don't think that he should be left out of the conversation. And that's Russell Wilson, uh, because they're playing in a, in a tougher division than both of those teams. And I would say he probably has Outside of DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, he probably has less than Rodgers. And that team is still playing off and on at a Super Bowl cal- caliber level. Well, Seattle's defense is trash. And if you not if you look at like DK the emergence of DK Metcalf actually hurts Russell Wilson. Yeah. For MVP. So like Russell Wilson's just not gonna get one. He's like, sorry. <laughs> Everybody thought everybody thought he was gonna get it. It's not happening. Yeah, we'll see. The, the media still has their agenda. You never know. I mean, I I agree with both of you guys. Unfortunately, with with Aaron Rodgers, I think he has a slight edge. Um, I mean, I think his, especially after this weekend with Kansas City, could have lost to Miami um, with a bunch of turnovers from. Uh, Mahomes, but I think just at this point and continuing is just just Green Bay is just looking like that juggernaut of a Titan, and I don't know who's going to stop Aaron Rodgers. All right, last one. 
Jamal Adams 